I was going through some old scripts recently, and I found one on Tank Miss. I talked about the idea that Soviet T-34s were poorly made. I didn't talk about it very thoroughly, so I thought I could cover it again. However, the T-34 isn't the only Soviet tank with this reputation. Many people believe that Soviet tanks as a whole were poorly built, being nothing more than canned fodder for human wave attacks. I think this reputation is undeserved, so we'll be going through the major Soviet tanks. The T-34, T-54-55, T-62, and the various late MBTs. Going chronologically, we're going to start with the T-34. Before the T-34 was introduced, it was recognized that it had some glaring problems. Namely, transmission and engine cooling issues. Regardless, it was pushed into service. The thought was that they could introduce it slowly, ironing out the quirks while allowing crews to become familiar with it. A majorly overhauled version, the T-34M, would also be developed. Unfortunately, the best laid plans often go awry. The fall of France rightfully surprised the Soviets, so they began producing T-34s at a much higher rate. When they were invaded by Germany, they had no choice but to cancel the T-34M. They weren't content to let these issues remain unresolved though. Instead of one major overhaul, improvements were gradually added over time, mostly so production lines wouldn't be disrupted. Crew positions were improved, the air filter was reworked, the transmission was refined, and both production time and cost were slashed. Some issues persisted, but with diligent maintenance, they could largely be avoided. T-34s are often derided for their rough appearances, but according to US intelligence, the components that mattered were well made. The Soviets had to make T-34s as fast as they could. They weren't keen to waste time on cosmetics. Now moving on to the T-54. Much like the T-34, a number of shortcomings were identified early on. The design of the turret was bad, the transmission was garbage, the drive sprocket needed to be changed, the suspension often broke, and once again, the engine filter needed to be redesigned. Most of these were not fixed prior to production. Instead of doing what they did with the T-34, they decided to stop production until the issues were fixed. This led to two models, 1949-1951, which turned out to be superb machines. The success was compounded by the T-55, which saw features like NBC protection, a vertical stabilizer, and night vision devices. Between 1945 and 1958, over 16,600 T-54s were produced. Out of all of these, only 617 were the unreliable 1947 model. The T-55 would go on to become the most produced tank in history, and its success is well known. Not only was it on par with NATO tanks, but it could be produced on a much larger scale. The next tank on the list, the T-62, was something of an outlier. Unlike the tanks mentioned so far, it didn't have major problems early on. This is likely because it was heavily based on the proven T-55. Basically, it was realized that the T-55's gun was too weak kinetically. A more powerful gun was needed, but the T-55's chassis couldn't accommodate one. The T-62 was put on the back burner for a while, but it was eventually chosen for service. It didn't have any notable issues, besides maybe the engine overheating in hot climates. It wasn't produced as much as the T-55, but it still saw extensive service. Even in the 80s, it made up more than a quarter of the Soviet tank force. Next, the T-64. The initial T-64 was a return to form, as it was plagued with a wide variety of deficiencies. The suspension, autoloader, turret composite, transmission, and engine were all busted to varying degrees. It was in such a bad spot, it spawned the T-72 as a possible replacement. It was eventually improved and put into full service, but it still had some pretty serious faults. T-64s were, much like the IS-3 heavy tank, requiring rebuilds constantly. Compared to the T-64, the T-72 was a massive improvement. During its development, reliability and low cost were paramount. It used the diesel V46, an improved version of the T-55's engine. The T-64's fragile suspension was swapped out for a more traditional layout. The transmission and autoloader were also replaced by less impressive versions, but the added reliability was far more welcome. Upon its introduction, the T-72 didn't experience any serious problems. It did have very minor deficiencies, but they were fixed quickly. The T-80 is a bit more complex. It was supposed to replace the T-72 and T-64, but only ended up replacing the latter. The gas turbine engine wasn't super reliable, had poor fuel economy, and loved to choke on dust, but these were easily fixed. Even though it was a much better tank, it wasn't produced as much as the T-64. It was simply far too expensive. I'm sure you saw a pattern with all these tanks. Almost all of them had problems initially, but they were treated very seriously. Reading some comments online, they make it out like the Soviets didn't care at all. Just throw a hunk of metal together, chuck some guys in it, and send them to their demise. But this was not the case. If the issues were minor, then they were eventually fixed during production. If the issues were serious, then one of two things happened. Either production was limited, or it was halted entirely. Some would argue the tank shouldn't enter production with any issues, but this simply isn't realistic. I mean, look at the American M60. Most people think it was a pretty reliable tank, right? But when it entered service, it had just as many problems as most of these Soviet tanks, if not more. You see that rise bit? It isn't tacked on there because it sounds cool. Just because something has a higher quantity doesn't mean it's lower quality. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.